Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm go going to be critiquing a video on hyperreal numbers. So let's begin. Now this uh, video is by some guy called Blar Goner and it's an introduction to infinitesimals and non-standard analysis. So he begins his video here and talks about a lot of things, but uh, I'm going to critique it according to what I've written down here. So it says here, um, well, the video basically is, you, you'll be as astounded at the amount of nonsense that is propagated in non-standard analysis. Uh, non-standard anal non analysis was uh, developed by that idiot, Abraham Robinson. Uh, he was a failed mathematician and didn't understand calculus. So he not only uh, did not understand calculus, but he made it far more difficult in his so-called NS analysis. So um, in his, in his uh, formulation, you not only need to know the standard calculus, but you also need a couple of semesters of abstract algebra and group theory. And of course, it's all bullshit on top of existing bullshit. So let's see just a few of the parts that stand out. So at, at uh, timestamp 0, 2, 1 or 21 seconds, he says, we assume some familiarity with calculus, uh, limit, continuity, derivative and abstract algebra, ring, field and quotient. Now, this is typical mainstream modus operandi of self-referential -re proofs. Okay, you don't get to use uh, the concept that you're trying to develop a proof of its well-formedness and existence by using the same concept. Okay, you just can't do that. That's rule number one of well-formed concepts. You cannot have self-referential concepts. Okay, then at 56 seconds, he says, in the history of calculus, Leibniz and, Knight and Newton freely used infinitesimals in calculus. Well, that, of course, is utter bullshit. There is no such thing as an infinitesimal. And although the presenter goes on to show later that he can produce such through ultrafilters, the theory is gibberish and fails under the slightest logic inspection. I'm actually not going to go that far, so don't worry about that. Then at 110, he says, intuitively, an infinitesimal is an infinitely small number. Now, of course, I don't respect any academic who uses the word intuitive. And if you want to know why, look up the word. I'm not going to tell you. Look up the word. Then intuitively, what he says is the same as saying intuitively an infinitely small number is an infinitely small number. So circular reasoning works in mainstream. Mm. There is no such thing as an infinitely small number. It's mythology. Okay. It just doesn't exist. It's like saying uh, there is a number that comes after zero, immediately after zero. There is no such number. And you cannot produce it, not even with ultra filters or all the uh, extra theory that you have to learn behind it. Rings, fields, uh, quotients, quotient sets, quotient numbers, etc. Now, at 141, he says the derivative of x squared is 2x. He, then he says, if dx is an infinitesimal change in x, then uh, dy dx is equal to x is equal to 2x plus dx. Now, since dx is infinitesimal, we can ignore it and write dy dx is equal to 2x. Mm. So, not only is there no such thing as an infinitesimal, but infinitesimal change is more shit on top of existing shit that he writes. In other words, meaningless nonsense. You simply have to believe that an infinitesimal exists and that you can ignore it, which is pretty strange if you're just going to ignore it. Then why even bother if it exists, really? So it, it's totally bizarre. Then a two or four says, but this argument is nonsense. He says, oh, that's his, his first correct statement, by the way. He says, if dx is equal to zero, we can't divide dy by dx to get dy dx. And if it's not equal to zero, we can't ignore it. Oh, so now we can't ignore it. Whereas up here, uh, we can ignore it and simply write that. So he's going back and forth. And, he, and then he says, assuming dx is a real number. well. You know, this guy, this scatterbrained idiot needs to make up his mind what he's going to be assuming. First, he assumes it's an infinitesimal, which we don't know what the fuck that is. 
And then he says, it's a real number, which also, by the way, doesn't exist. It's a, it's a bogus concept. There is no valid construction of real number, not by Cauchy or Dirigent or anyone else. And I do know better because I'm a genius, okay? And I know that I'm a genius. And I'm not being arrogant saying that. That's just a fact. So the scatterbrained idiot got one thing right only. He says his argument is nonsense. Then he seems to be unable to make up his mind. And I've just mentioned that. So at 2.17, he says, why? Wait, why can't we divide by zero again? <laughs> because zero is not a true number, you fucking moron. Okay. All the arithmetic operations are first defined geometrically long before algebra is introduced. And this, this, you won't know this, by the way, because you're morons. Before algebra is introduced in book seven of Euclid's Elements. That's right. Algebra was really around long, long before the, the Arabs actually coined the word algebra. Okay. Except it wasn't called algebra back then, but it, it was exactly what happens in algebra and the reason you can use algebra today. Okay. It was because of the ancient Greeks, not because of the Arabs. Then at 217, he says, for numbers P and Q, the quotient P and Q should be a unique number R such that P is equal to RQ. Now, I could write a book in response to that utter garbage claim showing how this dimwit misunderstands just about everything in mathematics. I'll touch on a few misconceptions, three of them to be exact. P over Q is a number, okay? It does not mean P divided by Q. That's a typical mainstream misconception. Then next... R is any other number that is in proportion or equal to R. So that being the case, then you can't really have anything else but rational numbers as a derivative. Right? Okay. And then he says that P is equal to RQ implies that multiplication is already known. But this is nonsense because division comes before multiplication, which is defined using division. Okay. So you can't have multiplication unless you first have division. And you can't have division unless you first have subtraction or difference, okay? You can't have division without subtraction. So it doesn't make sense to define, oh, here's this Czech idiot here. Just let me dismiss him, uh, a troll. So it doesn't make sense to define P over zero, okay? It doesn't make sense, he says. Of course it doesn't, but not for any of the reasons he thinks, because he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. He doesn't even know what the number concept means, okay? A number is a name given to a measure that describes a magnitude or a size. So, um, and then at 303 he says, Berkeley calls them ghosts of departed quantities. I would have loved to meet this Bishop Berkeley, by the way. He was a very witty guy indeed. And, and then the, the presenter goes on ad nauseum, total bullshit, a total waste of time. What is shocking is how many likes he got, 320 likes. I mean, that's just, it's unbelievable. If you read some of the comments here, um, you'll see, you'll see that, you know, th they're pretty telling in, in, in many ways. Now, my geometric theorem uh, is explained here in this link and also how to fix it. But neither of uh, these are as elegant and rigorous as my new calculus, which is explained in the third link. But don't dismiss these first two links. I would encourage you to study both, because both of them are very important in understanding um, why calculus works, and uh, specifically, specifically why, you know, this... Uh, this misconception of derivative and uh, change in derivative and infinitesimal and all the other garbage has existed. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And uh, of course, I, I posted this comment here, but it's not going to last long. He's, he's probably deleted my comment already because, you know, obviously doesn't think much of it. Um, next time, I'll try and critique another video which is uh, really important nowadays, it's important to call out bullshit because people get on here and they don't know, they don't understand and they don't know and they can't think logically or rationally and they don't have the mind of a genius, which I am. I'm a genius and I'm telling you how these things work. Okay, not that that makes them right. You still have to prove that what I'm telling you is correct. 
and you can't rely or believe on anybody else telling you. You have to prove it for yourself. And believe me, if you have an, uh, uh, an, an average IQ, you can understand these things. You don't need to be a genius to understand these things. It's just that no one before me actually understood mathematics to the profound depth that I do. So I'm going to leave it at that. This is the New Calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.